what the mentality is here. Yeah, that's a good outline. Well, I mean, it's just a, it's just a, what do you call it? Brainstorming. It's just the ramifications of all of it, yeah. the value of it yeah. in all humankind. I, I mean, ultimately, it all bleeds down to that lowest point. <laughs> yep. All of it. Yep. I see people started joining. Good morning. Good afternoon. I always say good morning. I don't know why I do that. Yeah. So it's morning somewhere in the world. It's morning somewhere in the West world. Coast. Praise the good Lord. Good afternoon. Oh. Is that you or me? Yeah. Let's turn this down. What a day. Did you hear Erin was so happy? She said yesterday was a bust and today has been successful in every aspect. Isn't that amazing. I love How one it. One day can change to the next. It really does. It really does. Hey, sweet Lori. How's everything at your place? Everything good, I hope. See, mine is stalled on this phone. Hey, Anna. Is it stalled on yours? It's stalled on my little phone that I use to read. Hey, Cheryl and Robert, on my little phone that I use to read your comments. I reckon you're going to have to use this iPad then. I can't read them because I have to do this with my bifocals. Do you? Bless your heart. <laughs> oh. I know I'm so pitiful. We have three devices here to to read to read comments, and one pair of bifocals. Are you going to get the trifocals? I'm going for it. I'm going to share this situation so they can be praying. Wait, wait, I guess so. I only see a few people. On. I can't but see. Mine just says one. That's you. You're the one. Two. I hope the broadcast does well. We are not having any storms today. Everything is pretty outside and it's going to warm up. God is good. I caught my wife leaned over the gate at the barn with this little girl look on her face <laughs> watching ducks play and like this. <laughs> and I walked up behind her and I said, I love that little girl in you. That you love ducks, that you can, and it, and it really, I thought that's what we need. We need a childlike innocence about us that we can still enjoy simple things like that in life. But who could look at young ducks and not have joy? We have one that's he's he's special because his head turns sideways, and when he drinks, he can't just go down and drink. He turns his head sideways and drinks sideways. It's so it's, sweet. It's always like that. He can't lift his little head up. Well, he does lift it up. He just... He just can't go to the right or he can't... He's pitiful. He eats and drinks by going down like that. Makes me want to hold him. I want to hold you. <laughs> you want to call him George? I may call him George. Oh, goodness. <coughs> so, it's a beautiful day here. Uh, she said, I hear you with the eyes. I had my exam and my macular degeneration is worse than my one eye. I'm so sorry, Lori. We are absolutely going to keep you in prayer. Hey, Marianne. I'm not saying Hey, Roberta. Here. I have to go to overview. And then click back to live chat. I don't know what it is because, see, I keep missing. Hey, Yoshana. George the Duck. Hi, Brigitte. Well, we Paul has had an eye situation. Y'all know he's had some pretty severe headache issues with migraines. And he's had some vision situations in one eye. And we were scheduled for eye appointments in May, but it was clearly needing to be dealt with quickly. So yesterday, praise the Lord, Dr. Champion got him in 
quickly and they diagnosed him with something called macular pucker and do you want to explain what macular pucker is he explained it to me that the back of your whether well, the gel in your eye gets watery when you get older instead of being more like gel so being watery it's not as thick and doesn't hold the lining as well about in the back of your eye it lets it sag and it can pucker he said like um saran wrap on a dish can it can, it can strip yeah pull pull loose literally from there and my symptoms were flashes of light and like right now even i've got the outside door right there if i look there and then look back everything in this side's kind of washed out looking at computer monitors which is what i do for a living looking at monitors all day um i have to keep the lights low keep the lights on the monitors down the other problem i have is 3 a.m in the morning i may wake up thinking somebody's flipped the light on so with my eyes closed i'm seeing light and uh it's no pain, it's just irritating. I do get headaches from it, though. I mean, I, I don't say no pain, but... Um, the, it, the thing itself doesn't hurt you. It just causes problems. It can cause blindness, and um, it can also heal and get better. And he said that's they're going to do some type of other test tomorrow, so just keep me in prayer. It, it's I have been doing research on it. It's not hereditary or anything. It's just... You never know who'll get it and who and won't. He, and he said, I asked what caused it. He said, they, nothing really. Nobody knows. He said, nothing you did caused it. And uh, he said, he literally said, luck of the draw. It's a, Some people have it. It's just a challenge allowed yeah. by the Lord. Yep. Um, I would almost do better with an eye patch to use one eye because. I wondered about that. With, with both eyes struggling. Uh, but anyway, don't want to whine. It's just keep me in prayer. It's not whining. It's yeah. submitting a prayer request. And yeah. Lori, we will absolutely be keeping you in our prayers for that macular degeneration. And yes. um, we just want y'all to know that we appreciate, we covet your prayers. They mean so much, so much. Carol, I hope it works. I hate that you have to miss so often. Because of your bro the broadcast not being clear. But so if y'all will keep calling your prayers, he goes back tomorrow morning for another test, and they're doing this test to get a base baseline so that as they follow this situation, they can see, you know, the progress or whatever is happening. So he'll go back in the morning to do that. Mm -hmm. Um other prayer requests. I know Lenny's brother in law is is not doing well. I talked to Tina this morning and her, her, um, I forget what she called him, Papa or Papa is, is in his last days in his sojourn on this earth. And I asked her specifically, was he born again? And she said, absolutely. He's born again. So, and, and Tina will be speaking at the, the funeral so we need to lift her in prayer. Mm -hmm. He's act, He has actually had a hand in planning his entire funeral, well, the service and all. So that's that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. But um, and we've got messages of folks who are sick. There's some cancer things like that. We keep all of those in our prayers. Amen. So do you? Want I have. To a, I want to mention a lady that I work with named Tabby. Yes. Uh, she is battling a physical problem. I'm not going to go into details, but uh, please keep Tabby in your prayers. Yes. And we'll just lift all of them up right now. And, of course, Kathy. Thank you, Lori. Kathy had surgery last week, and I know she's been going through a lot of pain, so we keep her in our prayers. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, anything, even if, if we've already finished the prayer, if you want to post a prayer request, go ahead, because we all go back and read them, and we all lift them up. Yes. So we're going to pray. Father, we come before you again, Lord, lifting up our needs to you. But first, before we do that, Lord, we praise you and thank you for who you are. We just give 
praise to your name, Lord. And we are reminded that you're always faithful. You always hear us when we call out to you. Lord, when you walk this earth, you said that our Father cares more about us than the sparrows and the field, and he takes care of those, so he certainly will take care of his children. Lord, we thank you for taking care of your children today. I just pray for these physical needs. Lord, this family that's losing a loved one, the peace that is needed at a funeral, Lord, and the, the healing that is needed and the grace that's needed when healing doesn't come because we know that if healing doesn't come after we've prayed, Lord, that that's your will too. And we thank you, Father, for grace and mercy in our lives. And I just pray and thank you uh, for Angie and that you would just anoint her today and let the Holy Spirit he be here that we might grow and, and consume from the Word of God and, Lord, that we might uh, take it and, and let it make us into someone that, Father, would glorify your name in our lives and that would glorify the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, honey. Today is going to be an interesting Bible study. We were going to start a new section in our Keeper at Home Bible study. And this one was going to be, is going to be about the heart of the home. We're going to talk about the kitchen. We're going to talk about cooking. We're going to talk about food preparation as far as storage and purchasing and and providing food for your family. And like I have tried to do all through this Keepers at Home study, I've tried to put out practical information as well as linking that to spiritual because I think there are some people who really aren't experienced at keeping a home. Sure. So I'm trying to add in those practical things as well as the spiritual things. Well, I mean, that's the relationship in a family is the parallel of Christ in the church. The husband represents Christ and the wife, the bride, represents the church. Yes. And so there is practical advice in the word of God for how to raise your family and, and the order of the home. That's where the whole world has gotten off track is. Well, we don't need a man in the home. We can raise kids without a man or, you know, the a single parent. That's not good. And, and some of you may be single parent parents, but that's not we God's plan and, and it's not God's best. That's right. And some people can't help it if right. they're single parents. They're not doing <clears throat> it by choice. That's right. But in in the process of this study... My human brain <laughs> was overcome with the vast amount of information from the Word of God. I'm going to go ahead and post these first scriptures because I know you're going to lead up to it. We are going to spend today's Bible study mostly in conversation. And I know we did a fellowship Bible study last week, so I don't think that that's going to be the norm. It's just that today, beginning this study, is going to require conversation, and I want you ladies to please jump in. Um, this is a ladies' Bible study, but I do know that there are gentlemen that are watching, and, and you know, I, the ones that I know may be watching, I also know the wisdom that you have as husbands, fathers, grandfathers, godly men, and if you have some insight, I welcome you to do that today, because today, this is an open conversation on this topic to to sort of wind us up in a place to enrich the outline we're going to be going through. Now, I hope that hasn't confused you. But all of you ladies that are watching have vast experience with cooking and taking care of a home. And and um, we're gonna, like I said, we're going to be talking about food. And there's so many scriptures about food, about providing food for your family, the importance of, of food in, in the human existence. Um, so, do you understand what I mean? 
and there's so many many um individual aspects for humans like like i have diabetes so there's different aspects in my life about that um if you have high blood pressure if you're um what is the thing now you can't eat gluten what is that called y'all know what i'm talking about people that can't have gluten in their diet i didn't know there was a name for it there is a name for it and i mean there's uh, i know that you know, some children suffer from dietary issues and they can't have certain things. Our son-in-law has Crohn's disease, so his diet has to be adjusted. People with allergies, there's so many things about food. And and you see, you can see how this is such a huge topic, but it's also huge in the life of a homekeeper. A wife, a mother, a grandmother, a um, lot of men are involved in cooking and preparation of food for their families. It's really big. And I actually sort of said to the Lord, maybe maybe I could just skim over this one, just you know, hit the highlights and move on. And the, the Holy Spirit, I felt, just sit down on me and say, whoa, you're not skipping over this. We're not zooming past this. We're going to spend time on this because right now this is vitally important. And of course, that led to a whole lot of discussion with the father. And I said, why is it so vitally important right now? And he told me, and it's you know, a little bit nerve wracking if you're not anchored. And we'll talk about that too. So if y'all understood all of that that I just said, please take that as your permission and your request to please jump in here with your comments because I want to add them in here because I'm taking notes. I already have three or four pages of information that I printed out and I told Bob, I said, we're probably aren't even going to touch on any of that because I want to get this, I want to get this outline nailed down. Okay. Do you have any view of what I just said? I have a view, but I'm not going to say anything at this point. Okay. I'm going to let you run Celiac with Celiac disease, thank you. and Or sprue, thank you, both of you. And, and you know, those of you who do have medical history, you do maybe have some issues that you have knowledge of. You can see how that's going to play into all of this. Because a lot of it is food-related. Yes. And food, different diet can help you. Yes. Right. I mean, yes. he. I talked to the eye doctor yesterday, and my situation. I had been taking a over-the-counter eye supplement, which was vitamins and minerals, that my primary doctor suggested. But uh, when I talked to him, he said, he said, well, you know, Paul. He said, if you eat green leafy vegetables right. regular in your diet, he said, you'll probably get everything that's in that bottle. Right. And that's the thing is we're so used to going and buying a bottle of pills instead of changing our diet. Boom. Right. 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 You going to cover that? Yeah. Okay. Well, I was just thinking, y'all may not know this because I don't share this, but when I graduated high school, I started in nursing school. I was going to be an RN and and went to college for nursing school, nursing school and not too long after that, um, I was married and had to quit. So, but the but one of the first classes that I took was the nutrition class. I wanted to take that first, and I remember in this class, some them talking about you know the different vitamins, minerals, all of that that we needed, and someone asked the professor. Um, you know, what about the Jetsons? They could take a pill and it had everything in it. Can we not just take a pill and supply our nutritional needs? And the the professor said, that sounds really good, but it's the things that we don't know that could kill you. Mm. We know what we know, but the things that we don't know may not be in that pill and that could kill you and that has always stuck with me it's like some uh sci-fi movie where they're traveling outside the galaxy and they have to go to you know 
some kind of dormant state and they have some kind of pill or something that they take for nutrition. Right. You know, they, I, I remember getting in a discussion with a man who got on this health food kick. It's a guy I worked with and, and he had all, and we would go out of town on our job back then and, and I would, you know, stay not in the same room, but at the same hotel with him. And he would always unpack his stuff and he'd have these bottles of vitamins and minerals. And uh, he said, don't you take this? And I said, no. And he said, he said, well, you know, you, you need to be, be taking all this to be healthy. And uh, I picked him up and it's like, minim, this requires, this is the minimum daily supply, minimum daily supply. And I said, that's just the minimum daily supply. I said, I said, if you're eating a good diet, you should be getting that in your food. Mm -hmm. You know, you shouldn't have to even take all this. And he was taking all this stuff to be healthy. You know, that's the mindset, yeah. a pill. Yeah. Just Take give a me a pill. pill. That's right. And see, that's that's part of all of this discussion is, is the quality of the food that you're taking into your body. And I, again, I hope that over, over these years, I've encouraged you to see when we talk about the practical, the physical aspects, that your brain, not your brain, your spirit is automatically beginning to link the spiritual truths when we talk. Um, and I, you know, I always talk about going out in the garden and seeing the spiritual truths in the actual physical work in the garden. There's so much linking. God used the, the physical things of this earth to build our spiritual. So I, I'm hoping that that is happening with y'all. Hey, Marie, Marie from Virginia. Uh, Marianne said, five years ago, I had to change my diet radically because of autoimmune thyroid. I finally healed from all kinds of mystery issues that had plagued me. Mm, yeah. Yes. And say, oh, that that's such a good example because that is part of the ramifications of what we're going to study. There's so much. It's like a massive spider web. And you look at this. Web, but then you see all of the individual strands blending in. And so as we talk about the kitchen and the heart of the home for a homemaker and, and a keeper at home and all of that, I want y'all to just see, see why today is going to be that discussion. Um, and I wanted to read a few scriptures. Hey, Leticia. Let's just start with John 6, 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Boom. Stamp that. It's done. If you take Jesus into your life, that's all you need, because once you've absorbed spiritually the truth of who jesus christ is everything else is going to be in place mm. the problem is some people don't like the crust <laughs> some people don't like the middle some people need to add a little bit of, of butter oh. to that bread some people want some peanut butter on it mm. Some people need that bread toasted. Some people prefer wide over wheat. Wide over wheat. Not the kind of bread I like. That's right. Do y'all see where I'm going here? Yes. Jesus is the bread of life. But in what way do we tweak it <laughs> to make it where we like it a little more? So really you like the jam instead of the, the bread. bread. Like I like the cream instead of the coffee. Right. They go good together, but yeah. he said, he that cometh to me shall never hunger. Well, that's just as clear as the bell. And yet, we want the Lord to come to us. We're going to worship, and the Lord is going to come into this place. Mm. No, 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 no. He that cometh to me. That means us going to him. It's like not going to the bakery and buying the bread and bringing it home and doing your additions. Go into the bakery 
and seeing what the Father has for you there. Mm -hmm. Walking into his presence. We don't want to do that. We want Jesus to come to us. Mm -hmm. He that believeth on me shall never thirst. When it talks about believing, even the devils believe in Jesus. There's more to the believing. And when we're, he's talking about thirst, he's talking about the desperate need for him. Okay, do y'all see what I'm saying? There's so much here. Mm -hmm. I'm missing. What am I missing? Oh, man, no calling down heaven to earth. <laughs> no. Um, 1 Corinthians 10.31. And I have posted all these scriptures in the comments above if you're just joining us. 1 Corinthians 10.31, whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Wow. Something twinged in you, didn't it, yes, baby? Yes, I did. Share? What you share? Well, you know, we always read over that and say, so does that mean like, be careful what kind of food you eat and what kind of drink. Don't drink don't drink alcohol because that's what Jesus was talking about here. Uh no. Spiritual food. Right? Yes. The appetites. Yes. The desires. Yes. The hungers that we develop in our lifetime, in our physical person and in our spiritual person. What are we hungering for? What are we craving? When you're pregnant, okay, when I was pregnant with Haley, I craved Doritos. I did. I just did. I mean, like, wake up in the middle of the night, want Doritos so bad, get in the car and go get Doritos. I remember craving Rally's French fries. I never craved ice cream and pickles. Never. But, you know, I would. Cra I remember craving ham during one of my pregnancies. I just wanted ham. You still crave ham. I do crave ham. <laughs> I love ham. But I remember the doctor telling me I needed protein, and mm. that was the ham that I, I meant, the meat that I could eat that wouldn't make me nauseated because mm. some meat made me nauseated. Mm. Anyway, so the... There was a craving. There was a deep desire for something. And I remember there being a poster on the, the wall of the obstetrician's office. And it said, if you find yourself craving ice or clay or dirt, notify your doctor immediately. And I asked the nurse later. Now, see, the ice thing, I understand because when I was 50, I was insane for crushed ice, and I ended up having a low, low blood iron. I was in trouble and didn't even know it and ended up at the hospital having IVs for iron and all this stuff. Yeah, she, I was there in the room with her when the doctor was giving her her regular physical, and he was about to sign off, you know, that everything was good. And uh, he said, is there anything else you want to ask while you're in here? And she said, and she thought a minute, and then she said, what? Wait a minute. She said, there is something kind of weird. She said, she said, I don't know why, but she said, I just have been craving ice. And he turned white as this piece of paper in front of me. He and he went, he said, craving ice? And she said, yeah. He said, uh-huh. And he went and made some notes. And he said, we're going to do a blood test. And it was just, it was like the next week. Before the, a week was up, she was getting infusions, yeah. iron infusions. My iron was like four. I don't remember what it was supposed to be, but mine was like four. But I, I was losing iron, iron, iron. Anyway, there are things that we crave that our body needs, and there's things that we crave that our spirit needs, a hunger and thirst for the things of God. But when we're craving things that are not good for us, things of this world, Pregnant women, if you're craving clay or dirt, not good. Do you see? You see? We're going to talk about that. Shall never hunger, shall never thirst. That's right. In John 3, 6, 35. Shall never hunger and shall never, well, shall never crave anything else. That's right, because he will fill all those things. And fulfill us. Fulfill us. 
Um, Carol said with Michael, she's craved butterscotch sundaes. That's a good one. Aubrey, I cra with Aubrey, I crave McDonald's breakfast sandwiches, egg McMuffin. Yes, I still crave those. Yep, anemic. Mickey said, with my first pregnancy, I wanted to drink downy fabric softener. It just smelled so good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I am with you, Mickey. Why do they make soap and stuff like that smell like food? Have you ever wondered why they make soap like smell like vanilla or strawberry? It just makes you want to bite into it. Um, Anna said, the owner at our small little supermarket knew I was pregnant before we did based on what my husband started to buy. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> oh, that's a smart guy. So you see what I mean? There's there's aspects of of spiritual truths in all of this. Mm. Um, let's go to First Corinthians eight eight. But meat commendeth us not to God, for neither if we eat are we the better, neither if we eat not are we the worse. I know that one doesn't seem to fit right here, but when I found it and I was reading through it as part of my research for the Bible study, that one just just came up. It just kept coming up. Mm. And I got to thinking, you know, we were I was on that keto diet. Um, and you eat lots of fat, you eat lots of protein, lots of meat. Um, and then, you know, there's vegetarians and, and all of that that they don't eat any meat. And it, there's so many um viewpoints and he says spiritually speaking we want to do certain things that we think fit where we are mm -hmm. but once again you're going back to what you think and what you believe and the new thing that's come along ultimately there is truth and as we study through about food about homekeeping and and let me tell you something. I had I stepped on my own toes when I was writing some things down. I mean, the Holy Spirit was just He was just exposing certain things in my walk where I was not really walking in a commitment to certain things and and i'll explain that later i know i'm being very vague and but you know when you start getting a, a light flashed in your eye it's gonna start hurting a little bit it's, it's hurting your flesh it's mm -hmm. causing some things to float up to the top and and it's not always fun so so Doing one thing doesn't make you perfect. I remember when I found out I had diabetes, which was about 24 years ago now. I was overweight. I've been overweight all my life. But at the time, I was devastated because I thought I had diabetes because I was overweight. And I felt just like the scum of the earth that I had done this to myself. And, and it was a good while later that I actually got to spend an hour with a, a doctor. Haley was pregnant with Isaac and we, she has diabetes too. And we went and the doctor spent an hour talking to her and me about how diabetes affects pregnancy. And I'm going to tell you what, Haley Marie, she just, he told her later, he said, if you could be the poster girl, for all of my diabetic patients, he said, I would I would put you right there. He said, you have done so beautifully. And she did. But in the process of that, I learned that it wasn't my fault that I had diabetes. There's certain things in our life that we take on. We bear guilt. We bear shame. We can, And if nobody else is making us feel guilty, we make ourselves feel guilty. No. So that to me, that scripture was just really speaking to that, and we're and the, going to cover that. And the Jewish people had the the dietary laws; it was a law yeah. to cer eat certain things. And Jesus was saying, or or Paul was saying, "Meat commendeth us not to God, for neither if we eat are we the better, neither if we eat not are we the worse." And there was a contention among the Jewish believers at that time that would well, you still got to obey the dietary laws? And then Peter had the vision. 
the, the animals let down and said, eat of these, and none of them were clean. Lord, I've never done that. And, and they thought that they were doing something spiritual by this, but it was a type of. Right, exactly. It was a type of eating the right spiritual things. And I think one of our one of our parts to this study one week, we are going to spend the whole time talking about those laws, and I really need you to take point on that, about okay. the discussion of that and, and why we do it or why we should do it or why we shouldn't do it or whatever, because that's, that's well, going to be Well, there's a lot deep... of Christians today that go back to those yes. dietary laws. And that's fine if you do that, but that does not spiritually change you. Right. Does not make you closer to God. I'm looking forward to that study. I'm very much looking forward to that study. Um, okay. Uh, deficiency in vitamins and minerals from lack of it in our diet causes problems and disease. Most food that we have access to has been robbed from most of its nutrition. Sadly, I like how you're bringing this all together. Oh, bless you, sweet Rebecca. We love you. <clears throat> but, see, but see, just like <coughs> what you just shared, Rebecca, all of us, you, me, all of us have a part, a facet in this, and us all working together to bring these truths out is what's so dynamic, right? We, and you're, And I may be jumping the gun, but you are comparing and paralleling spiritual food and there's a big trend today for people to say that I'm a very spiritual person. Yes. You know, I'm very oh, spiritual. Or you look at somebody and say, oh, they're very spiritual. And the word spiritual is not always godly. It's It can be that you delve into other kind of spirits and your your spiritual food may not be the word of God. Right. And if it's not the word of God, it's not the spiritual food you need, it will drag you away. It may seem spiritual. Yeah. It may be spiritual in some aspects, but it will absolutely, just like um, as you're going to get into food that looks good, it smells good, it tastes good, and it may not be healthy. That's going to be a good, that's going to be a good part. I'm sorry, Carol, and we do miss you too. I hope this glitch gets worked out. For some reason, every time she watches the live broadcast, it glitches, but she can watch it as a replay, and it doesn't. Hmm. I hate that. I'm so <clears throat> sorry. Um, Isaiah 119. If ye be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. I just saw eyeballs rolling back in heads. Oh, there they go again. Obedient, obedient. You know, just beating a dead horse, obedient. <laughs> I am so sorry, but that is, that's a biggie. It's part of the, it's not part of the whole thing. It is the whole thing. We willing, must walk in obedience. Willing and obedient. We, yes. Hey, sweet Lenny. We had prayer this morning for you, for your brother, Gary's brother, forgive me. If you be willing and obedient, and obedient, not begrudgingly obedient, not okay if I have to. Or you get sometimes you're obedient in that you're like when you're young, your parents bring you to church. Yes. Right. You, I mean, you're so you have to you're go. really obedient in that, but not necessarily willing. Right. You know, Dad always took us to church. That's right. Mom always made us go to church. Mom always sent us off to vacation Bible school. That's obedient, but it's not willing. Yes. Willing is when you have that choice of your own after you become an adult and you've got this remote control to watch TV or you have your Bible to read or you have a Bible to read or you've got Louis L'Amour Western novel which I always enjoyed reading. We like Luke. Right? Yeah. So, so hmm, a Lamore novel or the Bible. Well, this is more interesting. It's like, it's the food, right? That's right. Yes. You see? Mm -hmm. You see? I know. It just gets deeper and deeper. Uh, you shall eat the good of the land. 
not the garbage, not the snacks, not the junk food, not the fast food, the good of the land, the good. Why is it good? Because there's no regret later, because there's no side effects, because there's no bad attributes, the good of the land. I, I just looked ahead to make sure I wasn't going to cover stuff that you've already you already had pre-planned and yeah. I was one that that I don't see you having covered is when the when the Hebrew children were in the wilderness and they only had manna. Oh yeah, we're going to cover that. Okay. But you see what I mean like <laughs> Yes. But that's oh, all yeah. but is that all is that all do we have to go to church and just hear the Bible? Do we just have to hear can't we have some jokes thrown in? Can't we do do just a little bit of a laser right. light show? Right. I mean, you know, can't the music be upbeat and can't we have more modern music? Do we Why have to do have we those have old to hymns? pray so much? Right. I'm, I... Yeah, we are going to cover that. Yes. Lori said, like the story of drinking water with just a little bit of poop in it. Yep. It's just a little bit. Um, is anyone else dancing yet to avoid your toes getting stepped on, or is it just me? <laughs> I know, right? Like I'm going through these scriptures, I'm saying, could we not do this in private? <laughs> Does this have to be part of the broadcast? And, and this parallel she's doing, don't forget, <laughs> it's not just super spiritual that, well, yeah, you can you can serve junk food to your kids, but spiritually you need to put it's it's that too yes right? yes it's that too oh heavens ecclesiastes 9 7 go thy way eat thy bread with joy and drink thy wine with a merry heart for god now accepteth thy works doesn't that just sound wonderful doesn't eat, drink it and that? be merry go to dq right that's right eat drink and be banana merry. split Hush. Shh. Shh. Yeah, sounds so good. You know, Ecclesiastes is a very interesting book of the Bible. It is. And so many folks pull out a verse. Oh, yeah. Or, or even a phrase. Yeah. And they sort of miss the rest of the point. Yeah. The birds, they had, there's a time to every purpose under heaven, right? Yes. They made a song out of it, Ecclesiastes 3. And you know, it. I remember reading an article about some killer, and I can't remember who it was, I can't remember when it was, but I, the one thing I remember about that article, that he quoted a time to die. Well, Charlie Manson, he got he got uh, messages from the spirit world from the book of Revelation. Charlie Manson. Yeah. And the Beatles were given the prophecy to him through the through the songs they were doing. Yeah. Charlie Manson. Yeah, there's lots of stuff. And, you know, there's funny little memes that go on Facebook. It says. I made my, I saw one yesterday and I just laughed and laughed. It said, I made myself an omelet this morning. I got my eggs and I whipped them up and I added some cocoa and a little sugar and some pecans and some butter and I mixed it all together and I popped it in the oven and it was like a brownie. But she, she made herself an omelet and I got so tickled. But that's, that's, if, you know, we're just too smart for our own good. We can rationalize and make things look so good. Eat, drink, be merry. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Let's have a keg party and sing worship songs. I remember when that commercial first came out. It was in the 70s when Dairy Queen had the Deke, drink and be merry at the DQ. That was their yeah. little jingle. And even as a teenager, I had enough church and enough Bible in me. I drove by one of the DQs and they had that out there. 
And I and the rest of that verse came up. The rest of that verse is, Thou fool. <laughs> For this night, thy soul shall be required of thee. I'm like, do, do you all even read the rest of the verse? Well, I tell you, when I was going through a lot of this, I kept hearing that little devil on my shoulder, like you was talking about him saying, you of all people have no right to talk about good food and eating properly and providing properly. And I thought, you just shut up, you little devil. This may be the answer that helps me get through this. You know what I'm saying? We we are, the devil does everything he can to shut us up, to keep us from searching, to keep us from studying because our flesh, ourselves, our personality says, you're not going to do it. You're going to fail. You fail every time. But you know what? It's courage and conviction that gets you back up, even when you fail a thousand times, to get you back up and to go moving forward again. I'm telling you what, if I let failure stop me, I would have never had children. I lost three children. I mean, I just said, no, I'm not doing this anymore. I'd have never had my second garden if I, if I let failure stop me. Because, man, you talk about the hours I had to put in weeding because I didn't weed right. And I think I got one tomato out of that garden that was about as big as a quarter. I remember you uh, kept, you bought tomato plants one year and we kept getting the suckers off and you kept rerooting. And I think you had 150 tomato plants and I staked every one of those. And and they did beautiful for a long, long time. Mm Mm-hmm. But it was, it was amazing the, the the work that went in for the what I felt like was so few tomatoes. Well, what ended up happening that was one of our most wet, humid summers, yeah. and virus. Because I thought, okay, I'm not gonna do the modern hybrids. I'm gonna go back and do all heirlooms. I'm gonna do nothing but heirlooms. Guess what? <clears throat> There's a reason they made hybrids. Because heirlooms are very prone to disease. And that virus ran through every tomato plant. And even though in their young life they grew up, they were beautiful, they were healthy. I think they were like four feet tall, rows of tomato plants. Like two weeks, they were all dead. And you you can't stop any, you can't stop humidity. It's just there. You can't do anything about it. So the point is, you don't let failing stop you from study and from putting into effect in your life changes that need to be made. Not trying or perverting what God said so you don't feel so bad is not kosher. That's not what we do. We accept that we failed before, but we're going to move on again and we're going to try and, and you know what? Be more determined to not compromise on the next run. Because that may be the one that you gain the victory. Because that is the goal, to gain the victory. And the Holy Spirit is there. He wants you to have victory. Okay, let me get back to... Let's see. Uh, Lord said, Mike and I threw out one of Aubrey's My Little Pony books because I was talking about, it was talking about different lifestyles. I thought, no way, baby girl, this one's got to go good, good for you. Uh, When I've gone off track of healthy eating and finally start to come to my senses, I always remember that God sees rebellion in the same light as witchcraft. Yes, ma'am. Lord, help me not be rebellious even in what I eat. Amen. And Tina said, oh, how that devil has put several messages in my mind with worry this past week. I keep telling him to go away. My car will make it to Illinois and back home safely. My family will be safe and Papa will be in peace in his soon. Amen, Tina. You know, we have it in our system now. And I don't know about any other time in human history since Jesus came, but in the system now, we have convinced ourselves that if it keeps getting more and more difficult, that must not be God. 
if if we're if we're pressing forward and we're just not getting the victory, it must not be God. Excuse me. I don't know that I find that anywhere in scripture. And if you know a scripture that says that, please share that with us. <laughs> When you're when you're wanting to press in, in my experience, when I'm getting closer to doing it right, it's harder. Mm -hmm. It's more difficult. You know, when we incubate eggs in the incubator for however many days, 21 days, 28 days, that whole length of time you have your settings, you have your humidity, everything's fine. You can put, open that lid, check an egg, candle that egg, put it back in, you keep moving forward. But the end of the process, the last four days, you remove the turner. So, it, you know, the turner that rotates the eggs, you remove that, then you shut that lid and you don't open the lid again because you are down to the wire. There are things happening, and every time you lift that lid, you introduce a drop in temperature, you remove some of the humidity, you affect the balance. And so it's a harder process right at the end before the hatching occurs. Now, again, take that and make that the spiritual truth that, that I'm pointing out. Sometimes you are at lockdown stage spiritually and it's just dark and confusing at times, but you may be right at the point of victory if you don't throw up your hands and say, this is too hard, I can't do this, and you quit. The last lap is the most important. Isn't it, though? That's when they speed up. Yep. All up to that point, the racer is just going at pace. Yeah. And the last and, lap, bam. And, and it's the hardest. Yes. It's the hardest. The last one we go through. You're the most weary. Yes. The most ready to quit. You know what I think it is? When we're first born again, when we're baby Christians, God allows things to fall into place. We we pray for something. Miracles take place. The, you know, you can just get up off your knees after praying for something. As you start through the house, the phone will ring and there's the answer. And you, you think that's the way it's supposed to be, but as we mature, it this is like that's like a uh, in high school they used to have scrimmage games, right? Football, the the coach would divide the players into two teams. They're their they're their own team, right? And they're playing against themselves. Then you get out there on Friday night and you play a real team. Well, that scrimmage game, you know, you're all it's all about learning to pass and and have, uh, understand plays and that kind of thing. And so when we're first born again, and, and I remember it from my life, and I've seen it in other people's lives, what, you know, it used to be when I would pray for something, this would happen. And now it's like, like I do, God doesn't hear me. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. And, and that's the way it is. I mean, and it's sort of like the food thing that you're talking about. If you uh, have been on wholesome food, and then you go down to McDonald's and eat some garbage, you shall not surely die. <laughs> right? Right. You shall not surely die. They need to put that on your on their billboard at McDonald's. You shall not surely die <laughs> you, if you eat here. Right? Yes, I love it. I love it. And it's like the I've even seen memes about uh, people that says, you complain about my driving, but did you die? Right? Did you die? Did you die? Oh, man. Uh, you know, Shauna wrote, comment in another group is asking how this parent can keep her child from Harry Potter lessons in school. <sighs> mm. Letitia said, I went to church in New York this Sunday and I, it was like being in a nightclub without alcohol. The lights and the music were too much for me. All I could think of was when Jesus threw over the tables in the synagogue. It is sad, but there again, there again, that's part of this conversation. The, the changing 
of the appetite, the changing of the desire for God's way or man's way. And that's part, we're going to do that. One of these studies is specifically going to be addressing building an appetite. Mm. And as a mother, you know, if you've got a child that's been sick, it's very hard to get them to build an appetite. And so you have to do things. That's what uh, an hors d'oeuvre is or a, a, um, name just went out of my appetite head. stimulant or no 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 i'm talking about the little crudités and things that you give them there's a a bouche something oh i didn't even know what anyway y'all some of you ladies know. <laughs> okay an hors d'oeuvre something to start the appetite to whet your appetite to make you want the next part of the meal hmm. and um <laughs> i'm about to look up you crudite. get me so tickled crew crew crudite Anyway, crew, we'll talk uh, about it. No, hey. not no. We'll talk about it after this. I know this. what D means. It okay. Means, oh, a crew of Tay. Uh, uh, appetizers, tay. yes. Watering down the gospel, embracing cultural relevance. Yes, hmm. yes. But anyway, so one of our one of our things is going to be about building an appetite, and um, so I just wanted to go through a couple of these and I know we're I can't believe we're already about out of time we're going to talk about how God created excuse me that was rude I just I just burped I didn't didn't want to hear it (laughs) okay creation of food why (laughs) God could have created us in any way, but why did he make us that where we needed to eat? <laughs> You're laughing. I, all oh. I can think of is our governor when you did when you just did what you did. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't loud. Our governor of Alabama, Kay Ivey, burped. Look, do a YouTube search after we're after Bible study. Alabama governor. Okay. Burping on camera. But I didn't do it. After, after Bible study, because she's doing an interview. We're being silly. Okay. Okay, back to the point. Okay. The pursuit of food. Have you ever thought that all of mankind, wars have been fought over food? Yeah. The lack of food. Somebody's got food. I don't have food. We're going to attack you, and we're going to take your food. So the pursuit of food for mankind has been... <coughs> paramount but is the pursuit of god the pursuit of the food of the spirit Mm. that important i don't think so there's been wars fought over religion but is it the pursuit of the 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 meat of knowing god no and so we're going to spend some time talking about that the cost of food in your life Mm. People will save up for a while to go to a fancy restaurant. Mm -hmm. They will spend their last bit of money instead of using that to buy a bag of rice and, and some ground beef. They'll spend their last bit of money in their wallet to go to McDonald's or to go to Subway or wherever. I've known people that did it. I, I remember my mother telling us we're going to go to Shoney's and get a hot fudge cake. I don't have but $20 left in my wallet, but we're going to do that. And of course, us kids were thrilled. But that's that's a mentality. Now, the thing is, are you willing, are we willing to give the last bit of whatever we've got to search the word of God for that spiritual food? Or are we Mm. going to seek an easier way? Are we just going to cut on some preacher on TV and just listen to what he's got to say? Or are we going to dig for it ourselves? Find that preachers are wonderful. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, are you going to dig for the gold? Hmm. Um, Food and caring for your family 
and providing food and, and all of that can be a sign of status and power. You know, they, they've talked about, especially, you know, our daughter's a foster parent, and, and one of the things they talk about is, is abusive parents who use food as control over their children. They wow. just won't feed them. Wow. Yeah, it's horrible, horrible wow. what goes on. But do we do that? Do we try to control people with what we know about the Word of God? Are we trying to pull them up out of the depths of where they are by offering them the, the food of the Lord, the truth of the word? Mm. We're not going to use it as a control factor. And using food in the real world, I'm, I shouldn't say that, in, in the practical sense as a control thing. Mm -mm. Now, I'm not talking about not getting, giving kids snacks every five minutes. That's a control thing you should be doing. We are going to talk about how food is not only healing and life-giving, it can also bring sickness and disease based on its poor quality, bad choices, or contamination. Again, link the practical to the spiritual. This is upcoming things that she's Yes, we're going to cover yeah. in our study. And this right here. Every holiday is celebrated with food. Wow. What about spiritual holidays? What about feasts? Feast day. It, yes, it all goes together. Yeah. It all goes together. And think about it. In the in the divinely ordered home, husband is the breadwinner. The wife is in the home, managing the home, taking care. We assume she's doing the food preparation for the family all works together spiritually jesus is the bread hmm. the husband is it, uh, uh, uh. right and then then in the church the spouse yes manages the bread yes and and it's not like controlling the bread but serving right. giving the bread right do you see why I got kind of freaked out? Oh, yeah. It's like looking in the Grand Canyon at the depth of it. Yeah, and trying to find one point. Yeah. We're going to start right there. Yeah. I hope y'all... I'm not kidding, y'all. When I'm milking this morning, I'm sitting there milking, 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 thinking, okay, where, where do I start? Where do I start? Just... We need a new body and a new brain. Mm. We need heaven. I just can't even imagine what it's going to be like when we get up there and have all of that. She has covered this much of the first page of her notes. So seriously, please continue following on these Bible studies yes. because if you can see where this is leading to and this can help, this will have such depth to you. I'm excited. I'm really excited. Um, Lori said, it only proves that you're human. At what cost, that Lori said, <clears throat> Lenny said, it only proves that you're human. Lori said, at what cost are we willing to walk with Jesus? Amen. Yo, Shauna said, question, do you think people can study scripture specifically, but anything really without bias, without holding preconceived ideas and ideals Wow. Okay. Do you think people can study without bias, without holding preconceived ideas and ideals? That is going to require... That, that's going to require a talk. I think to me, the one word that pops out is holding without holding preconceived ideas and ideals. I'm a Southerner. I was born and raised in the South. I love grits. I love them. I, I, I can eat them morning, noon, and night. Put butter on there. Sometimes you put cheese, but grits, 
are so good. But I was raised eating grits. One time, one time, my mother made <coughs> cream of wheat. That is not of God. It is not of God. I gagged, but I had to eat it because that's all we had. I had to eat it. She made me eat it. And I gagged, and I was trying not to. I was a little girl. I was trying not to, but it was so awful. And I finally, I was crying. I was crying while I ate the cream of wheat. But I am sure that somebody from up north would feel the same way about grits because they weren't raised with them. They don't care for the taste, and that's fine. But you that's your preconceived. Exactly. It's my preconceived thought that I hate cream of wheat, but I love grits. But is it possible to change? Mm. Is it possible to develop an appreciation it for is. the other? It is. It clearly is. Yeah, I remember um, I had some stomach issues and you said, you need to eat some yogurt. And I had never eaten yogurt in my life. And the first time, now I like buttermilk. I like buttermilk with, but with my cornbread. Um, and the first time I ate it, I thought, this stuff's gone. This pudding's gone bad. How do you eat bad? This is bad pudding. Because it it sounded good. It had straw pictures of strawberries on the outside. We even topped it with something. This pudding's gone bad. But I'm gonna tell you, after eating that regular to, for my issue, I like yogurt, and you I do. and you I started craving now. yogurt, yeah. and it's good. And there's so many spiritual things like that that if if again willing and obedient, if you really have that desire to submit to the Lord, mm. and you really anybody is coming at study with a desire for the truth. This right here is evidence of that. I've told y'all before, before this, I would have prayed them demons off of you. And now here I am. But I, it took study. It took me saying, Father God, I want the truth. I want to know your will. What is your will, Lord? I don't want to just assume this is wrong. And I'm telling you, it was like, it was like, sunlight finally showed up to show me what the word was saying an act of submission in the will so yes i do believe ideas and ideals can be changed but you we all come with a bias we all do but it's whether or not you're you're willing to allow the bias to drop away so that you can have the truth imagine swimming with boots on you jump in the swimming pool, you're going to swim, you got on your bathing suit, but you kept your boots on. Over time, that's going to bring you down to the bottom. We've got to kick those boots off so we can swim free. Is that crazy? <laughs> Tina said, oh, the testament I have. I'm sitting in the living room watching study, and I see something out of the corner of my eyes. I see Papa walking in the living room and sits on the side of me. He has been comatose. For a few days and not expected to be around much longer. Oh, Tina. Oh, thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I don't know if you can hear me, Papa, but we love you and we're praying for you, sweetie. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Whoo. Anna said, this is going to be good, I can tell. <laughs> Lenny said, I will be honest. I only like God's made food. I always say if God made it, if man mess it with it, run, make from scratch and work work for it. Well, it is the best, isn't it, Lenny? God's food, unadulterated, another spiritual aspect. You see, <laughs> you see, it just all folds together. Mm. Uh, Lori said, Yoshana Sanders, I think it's a challenge, but something that can be done. I'm walking through some of this right now myself. Frog legs. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, snails, escargot, can you do it? But there again, think about it. Hunger 
is the best seasoning. Yeah. If you're hungry enough, mm. April said, hey, April, I agree with Lori. I think you first have to recognize any biased preconceived thoughts to separate them from your study. Recognizing them and realizing they may be a hindrance can really take a conscious effort. Absolutely. April, you are absolutely 100% right. And being willing to drop that bias. Think about that video you watched the other day of the British children eating biscuits and gravy. Yes. They all, in their, in their mind, a biscuit was something different. And the gravy was a beef brown gravy. Mm -hmm. And they brought out the biscuits, which are not southern taste, biscuits, southern and, biscuits gravy, yeah. and the white gravy. And they were all blown away with how, how good it was. And we're that way with something yes. of the Word of God. And, you know, man, uh, Pastor so-and-so is going to do a complete study. It's going to last several months on this. I don't know if I want to do that or not. Yeah. Can you have? Can you throw some jokes in or some anecdotes, some Paul Harvey type quotes? Yeah. You know? I know. I know. Praise God. She said he raised his hand up. Praise God. Tina, give him a hug for us. Amen. And Lori is you know, gagging. Mm. Uh, Mickey said, forgive me for making zucchini <clears throat> bars while listening to Bible study today. I only forgive you if you send me one. Doesn't that sound good? Mm. Mm. Oh, we love you guys. And and I can't believe I went over when I told Pa, I said, I don't know what we're going to do today. Because I just needed to get this talked out with you guys. Y'all are so wise. And so next week, Lord willing and the creek don't rise, we will start the kitchen, the heart of the home for the keepers at home. And I'm excited. I've got a whole week to pare down about 200 scriptures. I'm going to do some searching on in the early church fathers too. You'd be shocked at how much is written on the by the early church fathers about women being keepers at home and their duties and their responsibilities and the ramifications of them doing their job. I love reading that. I love it. Anyway, we love y'all and we're praying for you, Tina. We're praying for you. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I hope y'all have a blessed and wonderful week and you are doing... You did not get to do Bible study this past week. We're so. on uh, Exodus 8 or 9 on Thursday night. Mm -hmm. I can't remember which chapter. It might be 9. We are getting warm weather this week, so I am going to be out in the garden. I'm hoping that some stuff has come up in the midst of all this freezing cold. Be blessed and know that we're praying for you. And remember, if you have prayer requests and you want to add them in the comments, we'll go back later and read them again. And uh, there we go. There we go. Okay. Bye, y'all.